Yes, this um, video is going to be about solutions for when you've got poor soil conditions so you can keep maples. That particular maple in the corner there, we're going to put into this container at the second part of this video. But first of all, we'll go to uh, how I plant containers in the ground, basically, or in a container. So as an experiment, I took two the same holes in and one's going to have gravel in the bottom and one's not because there is a debate about on whether you should put gravel in the bottom of plant pots because it doesn't do make any difference on whether it's got gravel or it's just pure soil. Uh, so I thought I'd just put my mind at rest and um, just do a little experiment to see if it is best to put the gravel in the bottom or not. So I took a bag of 20 mil gravel, which I usually put like two inches in the bottom of each of my um, plant containers. I always wash the gravel that's going to go into the pot itself. I wash that first. And this is the way I do it on... Um, this is a cement mixing tray actually. And this is, that's 10 mil gravel on the right and it was 20 mil on the left. So I'll put gravel in the bottom, one has got gravel in the bottom and one hasn't here. It's, but it's got the same soil through and through. So obviously I just poured equal amounts of water in each and waited for the water to um, see which one would be the first to run out and as you can see on this it's the left hand side and that is the one with the gravel in you'll have to take my word for that then this is the, the type of pot i bury with my plants in so i'm going to dig a hole first that suits a lot bigger than the actual pot so it sits in with clearance all around it and as you can see the soil is pretty poor it's very chalky very sticky and clay obviously not wouldn't be very good to plant maples in because it's the drainage is poor so at the bottom of the hole I pour in a bag of unwashed 20 mil gravel because it's not being touched by the plant I then put the pot in and I put washed gravel on top of that, about two inches at the bottom. Then on top of that I add my soil mix, which has 10 mil washed gravel into it. And fill it up so that the, uh, the bottom could take on the plant that you're going to put into it. Uh, this is the tree that's going into it. Um, I'll just loosen off the roots before to make sure there's no really big thick ones that need pruning off before I put it in. I'm not I'm not going to prune this this one because this is quite good actually. It's a uh, nice fibrous uh, roots on it. Nothing too thick. But I will prune the large one at the, the second part of this uh, this video. Um, so place it in, obviously facing the way that you want it. Tuck all your soil in all the way around it with your fingers. Make sure there's no air pockets. Usual way of planting it. And then around the outside, I... You've got a three inch gap all the way around the outside, which I fill with 20 mil gravel. Um, again, just push it around the outside of the pot, not inside the pot, outside of the pot, all the way around to assist drainage again, basically, and maybe give it a bit, the soil a little bit of a, a breather. Since it's, it's a buried one, just use the uh, 
park the pine bark then just around the top of the soil and then just try and dis disguise that it's a, a pot um, and we'll see what that turns out like but um, I've got a lot of these to do this this year and I shall do them in a similar way so that I can keep them buried basically and just wait and see what the results are but that's that's the way on burying pots I know some people are interested so we'll get back to the container which is this beast here it's 800 mil by 800 mil it is made of um, pressurized treated timber uh, which is quite okay to use I've checked check this out as long as you've got a barrier like a plastic barrier between the actual soil and the timber itself um, but you've got to use treated timber as it and rot within a, a year or two it'd just be rotting on the floor so it's quite thick chunky stuff it's uh like far five and a half inches wide and um 40 mil thick timber so that it won't bow if we tip it upside down on its side then we can see the base which i've left slatted and as you can see you can see clearly the holes through the plastic at the bottom uh, for the drainage and little feet I've put on it so that it's off the ground you don't want it sitting in the mud and there will be bricks underneath these feet um, the front I've made so that it can come off because when you're going to take the tree out of this thing it's going to weigh a ton so the front needs to be able to bolt on and off so that you can take the soil out from the front because you'll never take out from the top it's all bolted on by um, 90 mil coach screws with grease on the end I always put grease on the end of them if it's outside and especially and it's easy to get in and out when you do need to take them out that's why I've made it so the corners so thick to actually get decent bolts in. So you put it all together and we've got it in position now and like the pots, fill the bottom up with at least two or three inches of washed 20 mil gravel. Uh, mix up your, your soil mix again on the uh, cement tray that I use and um, you'll end up with a nice mix like this then you can just shovel it into the actual container itself until you've got the base full enough to take the depth of the actual tree that's going in which is this one Um, I tie a cloth or an old towel around the actual trunk itself so that I don't damage the trunk at all because I then tie this 3x2 timber across it so that it's off the ground so I can knock the pot off without laying the tree on the ground and damaging the branches this way you don't damage the branches so you can knock the pot off it leaves it free swinging so that you can get underneath the pot and work all the way around it so you just loosen off the roots with water and obviously I use a, a root rake to get it in this condition this is probably after about an hour and a half of clawing it 
there are some of these large roots that have got to be trimmed back because they're curling around each other and it's the fibrous ones that do the work. The, some of the larger ones can come off and trimmed off before we um, put it back in. So I've trimmed them off here considerably and it also makes it lighter to lift up. Still keep it on the timber and lift it into the, the actual box itself. Uh, then you can move it around into what position you want before, before you start adding soil around it. If you want to adjust the height of the tree at this time, you can just stack out with bricks like this and tuck the soil underneath and around it. It's a lot easier to handle. And then you might still manage to get it not central like myself here, but uh, then you fill it with soil and your, your pine bark on top and uh, that's how I do the medium sized trees. So we'll have to wait until next spring to see what those have turned out like and uh, see what the results are by the end of the next year. Hopefully it's a better one than this year. Thanks very much for watching again. Uh, this is Terry Morgan. I uh, hope it's been some help to someone anyway. And all the best and happy new year to you. Bye bye now.